Hey folks, it's me, it's Michael Burhan here. I am here today for a very special day. And yes, I'm looking kind of Arab and gorgeous, as I always do. But we're going to be basically talking about the Nintendo Switch. It's kind of an unboxing review video because I've been given a little task to do by a big boy PR, Snake Bites, and also by a lovely, lovely company known as Venom. Now what these companies have done is they've produced Nintendo Switch accessories and it's a great, great little thing that we can do right now is do these because of the fact that I managed to purchase a Nintendo Switch. I got myself a Nintendo Switch from Argos. Well, it wasn't mostly me, it was thanks to my brother. Basically been able to get us the, the nice little neon Switch. So we'll start with the console itself and then we'll go into the whole uh, accessories for the console and talk about exactly what they do, what they don't do, and what would be the best for your kind of buy. Now, at the bottom here, there's gonna be a little pop-up so it will tell you exactly how much each accessory is. So if you wanna purchase it, you can do. And I'm also gonna leave links in the description below for anybody who wants to actually purchase the uh, little peripherals themselves. Now, let's start with the console. This is the Nintendo Switch itself. It's the neon edition of the Nintendo Switch. It comes with pretty much everything you've seen. So if you've seen one Switch unboxing video, you've seen them all in a sense, and uh, this is the Nintendo Switch docking station. Now, we've, a lot of people have talked about this and talked about the fact that these docking stations aren't that durable. They're pretty much cheap to make, they're very simplistic, and they're also very snug. If you're like looking at putting your Switch in this little station, you're gonna need a little kind of scratch guard in a sense. So you're gonna make sure that you have a screen protector for it, and Snakebite has you covered, so we'll go into that in a little bit. So it also comes with your regular HDMI cable. I have a box of these, so uh, whether or not that these machines come with them or not is great. But when I had a PlayStation 3, do you remember when that was released? They didn't even give you one of these. So, you know, I made sure that I took a trip to a local pound shop and bought loads of them. So I've got a bag full of them, so that's irrelevant. Maybe I'll sell it on eBay, get loads of money. Ooh, resell it. So, the next thing we've got is also the main charger dock here for the switch. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the switch itself on charge in a little bit, so give us some juice and uh, see how we can kind of respond to everything rather simple. And now what differentiates this from the, uh, you know, the, the original uh, switches themselves, the ones that people have seen, is that the Joy-Cons are two different colors. You've got blue and you've got red. These are kind of my favorite um, little colors. Apparently there's a lot of difficulty with the Joy-Cons. There's been issues with the left Joy-Con, um, more so than the right one. And there's also been issues with the fact that if you click these things into place the wrong way, you're gonna end up in a whole heap load of trouble. Now, they feel very smooth. They're very nice on the hand. You've got the grips, uh, the joysticks, which are, they're kind of, they feel new in a sense. They're, they're more plastic than anything else. They don't have the kind of coating that you'd expect on a normal like PlayStation pad. But the buttons themselves are rather smooth as well. They look like they've been done really well. Nintendo have actually implemented a lot of their own like kind of designs on these because they're basically a next generation of the Nintendo Wii's um, handheld controllers, basically. You know, the ones where you have the, the motion controls and stuff. So I'm looking forward to using these. I'm not a fan of like one, two switch. I think it should have been a packing title, but it wasn't. So we got those. So let's put that down over there and look at the screen. The screen is the next big thing for me. Um, it's the one problem that a lot of people have had with the console itself is that it's used to scratch. It's more plastic than anything, as you can see there. The tabletop functionality is great, but the problem is that they've placed the mi well, micro um, USB, shall I say, on the bottom. So if you're playing tabletop and you need to charge this baby, you can't do unless you do some serious rigging. So I think Nintendo needs to sort that out for the next generation of these consoles. Maybe find a way that you could do reverse tabletop, you know, just switch the flap over to the other side. Probably make things a lot easier. And add kind of an app. So you can switch the screen round. It's it's not rocket science, Nintendo. We love you, but it's not rocket science. Now with that out of the way, let's look at the other goodies that it comes with. We have another little, ah, oh, there we go. This is for the uh, 
Joy-Con controllers, it's a charger dock, um, and it's also used in a certain way to allow you to have the full gaming experience. I'm trying to be as careful as possible with this thing because I don't want it to break. If it does, I will be very upset and I will cry in my coffee. Okay, so there you go. There's the little controller there. It seems really nice. It feels nice in my hands. I can't wait to actually put it on and play it. I think I've done it the right way. <laughs> yeah, I think I have. Okay, so there's that. Which is good. It's It has a whole load of goodness. Um, the game that I'll be playing on it will be the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I'm saying this while my lovely cat Philly decides that she wants to roam the room while I'm doing this. So we'll let's check this out quickly and see exactly what this has got on offer. Uh, apparently people have been complaining that the cases are too big. Uh, I lived in the age of the Sega Dreamcast, the Sega Saturn. You know, if you think this is big, you should see those things. The, the Saturn case, especially in Europe, they were like cardboard and 99% of it was just manual. <laughs> okay, now, here is the Zelda Breath of the Wild kind of cartridge here. It's like a mini SD. It reminds me a lot of the PlayStation Vita uh, in terms of the way that they have their games, the Vita carts. So that's great. I am not going to do the whole thing that every YouTuber has done and lick the thing because it's got this bad tasting kind of element to it that stops people from licking it. But everyone decided to do this whole um, YouTube thing of, oh, let's lick it. Let's lick it. That's not me. I'm not stupid. Daddy has a brain. Okay, let's go from there. So, now let's go, we, we're done with kind of the Joy-Cons and stuff. Oh, here we go, we've got the, this is the full complete uh, part of the Joy-Con, so it allows you to go into handheld mode and also play two players, whatever you want to do with it. We can look at that in a little bit. I just dropped that, oh no me. Um, but we can look at that in a little bit so we don't have to go too much into that. Now. Let's go into the, the other products, so to speak. The stuff that's gonna partner with the Switch and give you a more kind of well-rounded element of gaming. We started here with these awesome headphones. These are by Snakebite. The headphones themselves are really good. I've tried them on my iPhone. I've tried them on other portable devices. It works on PlayStation 4. It works on the Xbox One, as long as you've got an external audio device for like mic work. These, I would say are kind of, and I, I know this is going to be controversial, these are actually better than Beats. In a sense it gives you a more rounded audio experience. It allows you to experience the audio in such a way that it's not just all bass. And I find with Beats headphones it's all bass. So if you ever like listen to the audio sound from these, it, it's amazing. And we can do that in a little bit when we get into the um, Switch itself and do a comparison between this and three other headsets that we've got here. So we can do that. Now, let's look at the, the device itself. Now it looks pretty much like the standard Switch with the red and gray. It's got like this Nintendo colors to it, but it's also got the Snake Bite logo at the top. You can put it out depending on what your head size is. I'm pretty much got a big head, so they're pretty simple to go on in terms of comfortability they're very very comfortable I use these a lot for everything now so if I'm editing on my laptop if I'm basically making videos and content these are the headphones that I use to listen to my audio and my sound because I do my audio editing separately uh, as I fit it through my iPhone now instead of actually doing it via uh, an external mic so the one thing that this has which most headphones don't have uh, in terms of like durability it's really really nice it doesn't seem like it would break very easily i've had my 10 year old daughter use these headphones uh when we're going to and from school and i've had situations where i felt worried because she would drop them and they're very very durable there's no issues they can take a walloping and it also has a nice little thing where you can daisy chain it to either another one of these headsets so if you've got a friend and you both want to play tabletop on the Nintendo Switch, you can do by daisy chaining this and have both of you listen to the audio sound in private. If you've got like friends or family about and you don't want to listen to people, you can zone them out with this. It has a very nice little levels of like bass, 
uh, intricate levels for like music and bits and pieces like that. I enjoy it very, very much. And the awesome part is it comes with a little baggie that you can actually put the headphones in if you're not using them. And they can pack up like this. The wiring is very strong as well. It's a very strong tether. It's not one of those that you could break rather easily if you can compare this to like something like the iPhone um, and their wire cables. I know with the 7, you've got the Bluetooth cable, the Bluetooth cableless ones, but with this, you can actually like pop these in. They're ready to go and listen to whatever you want to listen to. And I've daisy chained my headphones when me and my daughter are walking home and we want to basically listen to music. Uh, and I can just like pop my headphones in here. We can use that example with the Snake Bite headphones. Now, in comparison, um, these headphones are less durable in, in terms of the, these little portable ones here, as you can see. Uh, but I can daisy chain them straight into these headphones and have myself and my daughter have a session without any interruptions. So we both can play, we both can listen, and it has a very superior sound quality. And the great thing is, these are budget headphones. They're not expensive. They're not the same price as you're looking at for most of your tech. And they're very useful in terms of walking and using the Nintendo Switch itself. Now, I did move on to these bad boys, so let's talk about these in terms of headphones. This is our second pair of headphones that we're going into. These ones are basically produced by Venom. Um, these are portable headphones. You go wear them straight in your ear, they, they clip in, and you have the buds go straight in. So it's nothing like extremely uh, hard to do. It's very easy to practice if you know how to do it. <laughs> and it's not rocket science, folks. If you don't know how to put headphones in your ears, then I think you have some life decisions to make. Now, in terms of the benefit of these rather than using these headsets, these are used mostly for audio, and if you want to talk to your friends and play like in your PlayStation 4, because these work on the, the PS4 controller, they also work on the Xbox One controller if you've got a little bit of rigging, because you have to buy the little expansion module for that. Um, if you see there, it has a microphone that you can switch on and off. It has its own volume button as well. So if you feel that you don't want to listen to something too high, you can actually get the volume down on these. These are less durable and I can explain why here. And it's the cables. These cables are kind of very flat and very paper thin. They are not good. I'm not going to lie to you guys on this. I, you know, these headphones are really nice. They, they've got, again, it maintains the kind of same color as the Nintendo Switch itself and the color scheme that Nintendo go for, but the problem is the wiring. I don't see these lasting over six months. If you use them and use them a lot, you're gonna run these into the ground and it's gonna end up having wear and tear eventually. And if you're one of these people who like to like scramble your headphones up or wrap wires up, they'll break. The copper inside will break extremely easy. They're very good to use. They're a very nice pair of budget headphones in terms of what you're looking for. And they also give you another level of gaming experience because it adds the mic into there as well. The mic's pretty good. Uh, if you're a fan, if you ever played like, uh, say online games on Big Fan Destiny, you can actually use the mic through here and it passes through rather easily. For the Switch, I've never done online play and I don't think, well, I've just bought it, so hey. Um, and I don't think Nintendo have that functionality available yet because it's a fairly new console. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now, let's go on to the next little kit, and this is the Snakebite Starter Kit. Uh, now, the kit itself contains a set of durable headphones, uh, a little box for your carts so you can place your carts in. It contains a screen protector, which is one thing that you're going to need. If you don't have a screen protector for your Switch, why? You've seen the videos. If you want to get, if you want to just sit around with a scratch console, go for it. But you need that, so there you go. And it also has a carry case. The carry cases, I've been playing around with um, quite a bit to see how durable they are. Now the Snake Bite one is pretty simple in terms of what it's what it's there to do. The case is durable. I could my Switch could take a tumble, and I doubt anything would happen to it. I've been playing around like smashing it about, um, stepping on it, running some tests just to make sure that it would protect my goods. 
It comes with a pair of standard headphones themselves. You've got a nice little pair of black headphones. These are Red Bud headphones. You can tell with the wiring, they're not great. They're cheap, they're cheerful. They are something, if you're looking for a pair of headphones and you don't have a pair for the Switch, they'll do. Now, the great unique feature in this as well is that it has your little game card slots there. It's great for someone who wants to travel internationally. If you're not flying on the airline with a travel ban, you've heard in the news recently what they're doing. Um, and it's going to cause a bit of chaos in terms of those who like to carry their switches around because now you've got to check it in in luggage. And no offense, I don't check, I don't trust anyone in baggage claim because I've had stuff go missing. I think everyone's had stuff go missing. You don't want to go into that situation and have someone basically take your stuff and go, okay, um, yeah, we can refund you up to a certain amount. So that nice little shiny laptop you've got there, that's worth over three grand. Yeah, sorry, that's gone. And all that valuable data that you had, you haven't uploaded it to the cloud? That's gone too. Right, so. That fits in rather snugly. Close that up. See if I can close it. Again, you're having a little bit of problem closing this. There you go. So it's closed. Place it in the little pouch. And then you've got the, the screen protectors as well. We're going to place these protectors on the switch itself and go from there. We also have, now this, this is something that I wanted um, and it goes over the Joy-Cons and these are buttons and what they are, they go over the joysticks themselves, um, they're plastic, they're durable and they protect your thumbs when you're playing with this because these are hard coated you don't want to basically place down your fingers on hard coating because it's going to cause issues what you can do instead is have these little thumb pads that will basically protect your fingers and get allow the joysticks to function easily if i can get them on that is um without having the nonsense of overdoing it and that's kind of the thing with when it comes to these joy cons they're made for gaming and you need something to protect your thumbs you need something to protect the the pressure points on the pads themselves and you need something to protect your hands because if you don't you'll end up in a situation where they won't last the, the joy cons won't last especially with someone who likes to collect like myself i'm not really a collector i'm more a I wouldn't even say a hoarder, I'm a keeper. <laughs> I buy a console and I never get rid of it. I don't sell it on, I don't go to retail stores and, you know, sell it for like a fraction of what it's worth. Um, I keep my stuff and I pass it down to the younger generation. That's kind of the one the reason my brother bought the Switch today. Um, he bought it for my daughter. It's because she's having a little bit of a rough time, so we thought, hey, let's get you a Switch. Now there you go. That's connected on there and again it makes it a million times better because now the grip on there is a lot easier and it basically allows you as a gamer to experience your gaming without having issues and that's kind of the main problem with stuff like this is that you have a big issue in terms of your gaming experience that can hinder it when it comes to pressure pads. So, that's fine. Got them there like that. It's comfortable. So that's a good thing and it's a nice little treat to have because it seems like snake bite has thought of everything in terms of what they're basically using and how durable these are. Now, we've got the, basically the screen protector, which is here. Um, I'm going to put this on in a little bit and once I put it on then we can basically go through and test that so let's put that to one side um, and that's everything in terms of the pouch pouch is durable you've got little access storage for your game cards you've got the extra headphones if you need them just say you run out of the house you forget your big you know pair of headphones that you usually take with you and you need a spare set they're good for what they are worth it adds the little buttons as well that basically coats the uh, Joy-Cons joysticks to allow you a bit more easy 
gameplay and more of a flexible gameplay and stops you from getting sores on your thumbs, which is always a good thing. Now, let's go on to the next one. This one's by Snakebite. Again, this is a carry bag. I don't like this, and I'm going to say off the bat, I don't like this, and there's a reason why you don't like this. This is pretty good when it comes to rain, right? It can basically fight the elements because of the fact that it's got that hard protector there. If that was in rain, if that was immersed in water, the only way water will get through is via the zip. Pretty much. This, you would have to store it in your bag, in your luggage. You've got to store it elsewhere because of the fact that itself is its material. It's I think it. I don't know what it would be. I think it's uh, the material that it's based on is kind of the same thing you have on bags. It's not very durable. If this drops, you're screwed. Your switch is broken. It's one of those things you can have if you add it as an extra kind of little bit to your luggage. Uh, again, you've got the same switch color scheme. You've got the gray, and then you've got the red snake bite logo. But it does it does what it says on the tin in terms of covering and keeping your Nintendo Switch stored. It's a great kind of thing to complement with additional luggage. But if you're using this as a protector, no. It's it's not gonna help you. It's not gonna do you justice. It's not really worth getting one unless you need an extra little bit of carry case. That's it. So let's go on and move on from that. So then we're on the last um, case itself. This one's by Venom. Again, it comes with the little additions to it. You've got a spare set of headphones. You've got the, the cloth. We have a screen protector again from this. Pretty much, the screen protectors are pretty much the same. They look the same, they seem the same in terms of protecting the screen in your console because you want to stop it from getting scratched. You don't want to go into that whole like kettle of fish in terms of that, so it's great for what it does. You've got the little Venom kind of scratch card that allows you to, to put it over. And that's pretty much it with that. Again, it's very durable. It's pretty much made from the same material snake bite. You can, like bang this everywhere. It's a bit smaller though, which is what I've noticed if you compare it to Snake Bites version. It's a bit smaller. Ooh, look, there you go. It's a bit smaller and it really uh, it's a bit kind of by millimeters. It's a little bit longer, but it's a little bit smaller in terms of width. Again, it does what it says on the tin. It keeps your console protected. I'm not expecting you to go bashing your console about and smacking it around, but you know. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the next phase of this and actually see the console working. So we're going to have a look, um, see with the little parts that it gets, little components that we're going to add onto it if it works. So I shall see you back here in a tick. Okay, so screen's on. This one's a bit more... <coughs> safety conscious because it has kind of a little millimeter of extra coating on it and this is i believe this is the venom screen as this one is the snake bite version now the snake bite version is a bit smaller i like this because of the fact that it seems a lot more durable now what we need to do is we're going to put the console on I'm going to use the um, phantom power, the power itself from the um, charger, and let the console work. I've got behind me an outlet, so that will help um, turn the console on. We'll play some Legend of Zelda, and hopefully you can hear the audio coming from system itself. Let's move the switch box to one side and as you can tell I've got like a little charger port here. Okay so it's gonna be like the first time that you put the console on so everything's gonna have to work its magic. 
Um, we're going to see how it works in the dock in a little bit so we get to see exactly what we're doing here. And I've got to make sure that I'm doing it the right way because I don't want to end up breaking. It's a very weird thing. After you watch all those videos, it's like watching a horror film, you know, for the first time and feeling scared for the majority of your life because you, you feel like the boogeyman's going to get you. Okay, I think I've done that right. There you go. Nice little neon switch. So let's put it on and see how we go. Right. It says it's charging. And it gives you the switch screen. So excited. Okay, so it's giving me the dates. Okay, so let's go. We're still on that. We're on the menu screen now. It look, everything looks good. Let's go to the. console itself, Let's put the headphones in, because I want to get a copyright claim from Nintendo for this, because you know what they're like, because they are just terrible. So that's Link, the game, if I can find the... Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, put the game in. And uh, give this a whirl, shall we? And by the way, Nintendo, I'm not paying 40 bucks, 40 to 50 bucks for a game that you should be selling on Virtual Console. That's ridiculous. Okay, so here we go. Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You probably can't see that, but it's there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try out this screen protector right now and pop it into the dock. We're not going to actually have the dock connected to the TV and the reason being is I want to show you guys that it protects if it does protect or if it doesn't. So we have our dock, we have our console and it's going to fit snugly in, which it does. And it's in right now we're going to see if the, any scratches come out so let's pull it back out there you go and they don't seem to be any scratches there are fingerprints from me fondling it but yeah we got that so i have to admit the touch screen seems pretty awesome to do because you can still do it with the screen protector Don't seem to be any problems, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That seems fine, but Nintendo really put the price down on this. It's like a hundred bucks for a piece of plastic that you connect to a TV. The components are small, it's marginal, come on. Right, seriously. Um, apart from that, it resolves your problems. So, as I said, the prices are on the screen here. They're also at the bottom there. You've got Amazon links and where to buy it from if you'd like to buy it. Gotta have a big thank you to Big Boy PR for handing me all these goodies because it's amaze balls that I've got all this. Um, and I just want to say to everybody who basically purchased the Switch, hope you're having a great time. Leave your comments below. Have you purchased an awesome Snake Bite product? Have you purchased a product from Venom? Uh, both companies do their own variations of these products, they're very, very good. I don't seem to have a, too much of an issue with them. They're very durable. But what I will say is, if you're looking to get the most out of your Switch for the bang for your buck, then my advice would be to go over to Snakebite and give that a try. Venom do do their own nice little portable cases. Venom have the better case when it comes to screen protectors because their screen protector is a lot more durable. Snakebite have the better case so look at the prices tell us what you'll think tell me what if you agree or disagree with this review do you think i'm being a bit hard on this who knows i'd like to hear your point of views as always and uh, a big thank you to my bro as well for purchasing the nintendo switch he went and looked 
high and low for this console, especially the one that my daughter wanted, which was the neon version of the console with the red and blue. Um, but I'm completely and utterly satisfied. And yeah, go to the very links below. You can go to the official sites at the bottom if you want to buy the um, console bits and pieces, the, the extra little bits for the console, you can do so by going to the Amazon links below. And as always, guys, this is Michael Burhan saying that I've got gameplay. Have you?